This story begins with Ronald Acuna Jr. After months of anticipation, the 20-year-old Acuna was called up to the Braves roster in 2018, and by August, he was crushing National League pitching. On the 12th, he hit his fourth homer in five games. Then the Marlins came to town and Acuna clobbered them too, hitting four home runs in the first three games of the series. Which, in the entirety of MLB history, that was just the 82nd time a player had ever mashed at least eight dingers within an eight-game stretch of his team season. It's something that's occurred well less than once per season across baseball, and its scarcity can be underscored by the fact that no one in all of MLB did so for the first three and a half years of the 90s. And Acuna ripped off that incredible run at an age where he couldn't have even bought a beer to celebrate said accomplishment. So, you take the mound for the fourth and final game of the series. You've watched Acuna make a mockery of your pitching staff. It's the very first pitch of the game. What do you throw? If you're Jose Arrena, the answer is this. A 97 mile per hour fastball directed right at his elbow. Acuna left the game shortly thereafter and the streak was over. Arrena started the game, threw exactly one pitch, hit a batter with it, and was ejected. The only time on record this has ever happened. So Alex, that was a really crappy thing to do. It caused him bodily injury and it was just rotten, it was nasty. But um, there's one player who has managed to take the act of getting hit with a baseball into a weapon. And what is his name? Brandon Geyer. If you're, <laughs> sorry, I was thinking of something. Oh, sorry, we can start that over. That up. <laughs> I got too far ahead of myself trying to think of a goof and I forgot to say words. Nice. Here are just about all the things that can happen if you step into the batter's box. Most likely you'll ground out or you'll pop out. This has actually been in a sharp decline over the last 20 years because meanwhile it's become more and more likely that you'll strike out. In 2019, nearly 23% of all plate appearances ended with a strikeout, which throughout most of baseball history was unimaginable. In fact, it's gotten so bad that there are now more strikeouts than hits. Until just a few years ago, there was a chasm between these two. As for those hits, there's the single, which has remained pretty stable throughout baseball history. Same with the double. The triple, meanwhile, is the $2 bill of baseball. It's the most rare without being the most valuable, and it's been waning in popularity since a peak around 1976, but it's still pretty neat. Up here, of course, we have the dinger. Like the strikeout, it's kind of flying out of control these days. I mean, it's catching up with the double. If the home run actually becomes more common than both the double and the triple, we need to replace the baseball with a handful of Play-Doh. For more charts on this nonsense, you can check out our Dorktown article, which we'll link in the description, unless I forgot to. The non-intentional walk is up here, the intentional walk is down here. This is where we get to the really exotic outcomes. Batters reach base on error about 1% of the time. The only astronomically rare result is the catcher's interference, called when the catcher interferes with the batter's swing. The batter is then awarded first base free of charge. This only happens about 20 to 50 times a year across an entire Major League Baseball season. And finally, we encounter the entire point of this episode, the hit by pitch, which happens about 1% of the time. Being hit by pitches seems like a very strange thing to claim to be good at. It's like saying you're really good at birds taking a crap on you. You're not the one doing it. If you want to be great at being hit by pitches, the only agency you have is in crowding the plate and leaning into every stray pitch you can. So, who wants this crown? Who wants to be the hit by pitch champion? According to this chart, almost nobody. Almost nobody. Through the 2019 season, there have been over 4,000 players throughout MLB history that have accumulated at least 1,000 career plate appearances. One of those is Brandon Geyer, a corner outfielder who spent most of his career in Tampa. He is also a man who has lapped the field in the art of getting hit by a pitch, getting plunked on over 5.7% of his career plate appearances. He is, quite simply, the hit by pitch god. If we only count since 1920, a period known as the live ball era, this becomes even more glaring, with Derek Dietrich the only other player to even exceed 4% in that century-long sample. 
To put that in perspective, the average player in this time had only about a 0.63% chance of getting hit on each trip to the dish. But there are two seasons in particular that demand closer inspection. The first is 2015. That year, Geyer got a painful ride to first 6.23% of the time. Among players with at least 300 plate appearances, it was far and away the highest mark in MLB that season. In fact, only three other players were hit even half as frequently. My favorite part of his 2015 season, though, was in early August when he was hit by a pitch in four straight games. While impressive, that's not unprecedented. But what makes Geyer's streak so remarkable is that he only played the entirety of one of those four games. In the first, his back leg got clipped by this Chris Sale slider before getting lifted in the sixth inning. He played all of the next game, in the process absorbing this fastball to his front leg courtesy of Carlos Rodon. Upon returning home from Chicago, Geyer entered their subsequent contest in the seventh inning to hit for Daniel Nava, taking another fastball to that left leg from Eric O'Flaherty. And the following night, he was summoned in the fifth to hit for Nava, with this errant Sean Gil Martin breaking ball grazing Geyer's foot, marking the only time anyone's ever recorded pinch hit by pitches in back to back games. But Geyer's 2015 season was just a table setter, an appetizer for the delicious, exquisitely prepared gourmet entree that was to come. Because as impressive as getting hit once every 16 plate appearances is, that was only good for the live ball era's second most proficient season of beaning. And that leads us to the next year, a year in which Geyer would remove any and all doubt about his preternatural abilities. In that ensuing 2016 season, despite missing most of June with a bum hammy, he was hit by 20 pitches by the All-Star break. That was more than the entire Cleveland organization. So surely to boost those numbers, they traded for him a few weeks later. He finished the year as only the fifth player in the live ball era to be hit by more than 30 pitches in a season. In fact, despite being a platoon player, missing a month with injury, and only starting 80 games, he still finished the season having been hit by nearly as many pitches as the Oakland A's. I decided to butt in here and make another chart because this is just obnoxious. Here we have the hit by pitch totals of every other Major League Baseball team in 2016. Geyer, by himself, is down here. So while he didn't quite eclipse any entire team all by himself, he did come really close. Thing is, these teams needed 6,000 plus plate appearances to get here. An individual full season measures around just 700 plate appearances. Geyer didn't even get half that many. In just half a season, he got hit roughly as often as many entire teams get hit across an entire season. And with only 345 plate appearances, that meant Geyer was hit every 11.1 .1 times he went up to bat, shattering the all-time record for hit-by-pitch percentage at an exorbitant 8.99. And it's nuts to me that a rule meant to protect hitters like Geyer was actually used by Geyer as a weapon. In this chart, we see the on-base percentage of every batter in 2016 with a minimum of 300 plate appearances. Brandon Geyer ranks 28th of 268, so he's basically in the top tier, getting on base more often than the vast majority of hitters. I mean, he's right there with Bryce Harper and Christian Yelich, and better than the likes of Jose Batista and Mookie Betts. But where do you think he is without all his hit by pitches? By this, I don't just mean that we replace all his hit by pitches with outs because that would be too easy. I mean, we play it fair. We take those plate appearances off the books like they never happened. If we do that, Geyer falls all the way from number 28 to number 191. By virtue of his ability to stand there and get smacked by a baseball, Brandon Geyer ascended from one of the worst on-base hitters in baseball to one of the very best. Also in that 2016 season, he had two particularly fun stretches. One was his first 60 plate appearances of the year, during which he was hit by a pitch 10 times. The other was his encounters with his former teammate, Boston's David Price. On April 21st, part of the aforementioned cluster, Price drilled Geyer with not one, but two fastballs. 
In their June rematch, Gaia responded by launching not one, but two extra base hits off Price. And in their personal July rubber match, Price again plunked Geyer with not one, but two more fastballs. There's another eye-popping element to Geyer's 2016 season. In baseball, there are two ways to reach first base without swinging the bat. One can either draw a walk or be hit by a pitch. Anytime someone gets to take a leisurely stroll to first base, there's approximately a 93% chance it's due to a walk. Geyer in 2016 reached base without swinging the bat 50 times, meaning the expected distribution would be that he drew roughly 46 and a half walks while being hit by about three and a half pitches. But again, in reality, that hit by pitch number stood at 31 and was juxtaposed against just 19 walks, which means absolutely nothing about Geyer could be characterized as expected. For context, there have only been two other instances in the live ball era of a player exceeding his walk total in hit by pitches. Geyer nearly doubled it. If you're looking for weird people, this is how you strike gold. You correctly identify the weirdness of Brandon Geyer's career, and then you try to find those who had careers like his. Let's chart every player to get hit at least 50 times as a percentage of all the times they ever got on base for any reason. Does that make sense? The ones near the top are the ones who, like Geyer, actually depended on the hit by pitch as a way to get on base, turning it into something more than a freak occurrence. These are the true beanball masters. This is where the weirdos are. It's a pretty strange way to play, so it makes sense to see so many completely bizarre stories. Here's Tommy Tucker, who, during a game in 1894, got in a brawl with John McGraw. Who knows what really happened for sure here, but it's reported that fans were too busy watching the fight to notice that somebody had started a fire in the stands. By the time the fire alarm was pulled, it was too late. The fire burned down the stadium, as well as more than 100 buildings in the area. Here's Huey Jennings, who you could write a book about. Among a million other things, Jennings once nosedived into a swimming pool and fractured his skull. Turned out, the pool was empty. He was ultimately fine and played many more seasons of baseball after that. Here's Dick Patton, whose name was Dick Patton. Here's Minnie Minoso, who began his pro career in Cuba in 1943. He made it to the majors a few years later, playing in the 50s and 60s. And the 70s, when he came back to play three more games at age 50. And the 80s, when he came back at age 54 for two more games. And the 90s, when he briefly played with the independent St. Paul Saints at age 67 as a publicity stunt and the 2000s when he joined the Saints again and drew a walk at age 77. Here's Fernando Vina, a decidedly average player who was great at getting hit with everything, not just baseballs. Here he is fielding a routine grounder to tag out Albert Bell. He recovered and would go on to appear in the Welcome to Atlanta remix video with the Saint Lunatics for reasons known only to God. And here's Kelly Shopik, who at age 32 finally stole the first and only base of his career by running approximately 87 feet and then doing that. Here he slides like a man who has never slid and has never seen anyone slide, but has kind of had the act of sliding very badly described to him. And the king of all these strange people is our buddy Brandon Geyer, an otherwise normal seeming person who, to an extent baseball has never before seen, willingly uses his own body as a human baseball bat. Alex and I would like to thank you for watching Dorktown. If you missed the last episode, the tragedy of the 2010 San Diego Chargers is just right up there up the street. And finally, if you own a window-mounted air conditioning unit, I'd like to urge you to remove it as cold weather approaches. The damage the cold can do to your AC unit is nothing compared to the spike in your energy bill, since those things tend to leak a lot of heat. You'll be glad you did.